Perhaps when many of us hear cancer, we first think tumors made of mutated cells that divide and multiply out of control. While this is one simplified model of the development of cancer, such doesn't just happen out of nowhere. Tiny molecules like proteins play a huge role in cell development, growth, survival, death, and potentially the development of carcinoma, a cancer in the body. To better understand the why and how surrounding this model of cells becoming cancerous, we must zoom into the molecular scale and more specifically, the world of proteins. Hi there, my name is Samantha Cherovich and I am part of the University of Arizona's SIMI Student Research Program, where I work in Dr. Charles Putnam's Molecular Biology Laboratory in the Cancer Research Center, exploring various different projects such as 1433 proteins and their relationship to cancer. But wait, what exactly are 1433 proteins? And what are their functions in a cell? Discovered in human brain tissue in 1968, the family of 1433 proteins is highly conservative, meaning members of the family are similar in composition and structure, and are abundantly found in all eukaryotic cells from you to me to the dog next door and even to the yeast in a petri dish. They are crucial in regulating different cellular functions by acting as an adapter chaperone molecule that is able to move freely from cytoplasm to nucleus and vice versa. In humans, there are seven different known 1433 protein variations or isoforms, each with some varying and some similar responsibilities in a cell. These seven are the following, beta, gamma, tau, zeta, epsilon, eta, and sigma. So with this background comes the question, how do 1433 proteins relate to diseases such as cancer? One 1433 isoform, 1433 sigma, is, under normal conditions, a tumor suppressor gene. This very simply means that it is responsible for preventing the development of tumors. On the other hand, for example, isoform 1433 gamma behaves in the exact opposite way as sigma does. Gamma happens to be an oncogen, or a gene that, when overexpressed, has the potential to cause cancer rather than suppress it. Here's an example of how this occurs. Normal genes regulate cell growth. The tumor suppressor is the car seat in this analogy. When a mutation occurs on one of the chromosomes, an oncogen is activated and makes the subject susceptible to cancer, but not guaranteed to develop it. However, when a second mutation or loss of part of a chromosome occurs, the subject begins to develop cancer. Losses and mutations like this can be influenced by genetics, environmental factors, and aging, for example. Consider the 1433 sigma protein in normal cells. 1433 sigma's teammate is another tumor suppressor gene, p53, which is activated when a cell's DNA becomes damaged. In this case, typically p53 in a greater expression of 1433 sigma stops a cell's life cycle in order to induce cell death or apoptosis, so the broken DNA does not transfer into daughter cells. However, in cancer, mutated p53 results in a decrease in 1433 sigma expression. Therefore, 1433 sigma is not able to arrest and kill the potentially cancerous cell as it normally would. Thus, the damaged cell and its mutated DNA continues to develop and divide, picking up more mutations and abnormal chromosome structures that can eventually develop into tumors and ultimately carcinoma. So with this understanding of one model of how carcinogenesis develops on the molecular scale, where do we go from here? Some questions to consider are the following. Can we genetically modify 1433 proteins to alter potential cancer-causing functions? Moreover, how could this research be further expanded to studying various other diseases and conditions such as neurological disorders? Thank you all for listening. And may we ever keep questioning, researching, and exploring for a cure.